Lecture 14, Personal Library Management. In all the work that we've done thus far and all the previous sessions, all the material that you've developed during a session uh, was lost, destroyed at the time that you signed off. The only material that you've been able to get back has been 10 class, and uh, if you recall, you also got the uh, stored material in uh, one Apple course, the uh, drill, the exercise that we gave you. Now, in this lecture, we're going to uh, go through a series of exercises so that you can uh, save material from one session to another so that when you sign off at the close of one day, you're uh, work is preserved when you come back on the next day you have access uh, to that work and don't have to type everything in uh, all over again if it's it's going to be relatively important that you stay pretty close to the sequence that I'm going to go through now in order to get continuity if you'll please enter a right parenthesis clear We get the response, new workspace. Right parenthesis clear is one of what, is one of a family of system commands. All system commands in the APL system start with a right parenthesis. We've seen quite a few. In fact, your sign-on number is a system command. When you type right parenthesis clear, you get a new workspace, and all the material that you may have had access to is now gone. We can demonstrate this by exercising yet another uh, system command, namely right parent FNS, which gives the listing of the functions. We find no functions. Right parent VARS, which gives a listing of the variables. So we have a clear workspace. Now, let's define a couple of functions, let's define a couple of variables, then demonstrate how we can save these functions and variables in order to get them back at some later time. Let's uh, pick for our first function to define our old friend, the hypotenuse. Del R is specified by uh, A hype B, and uh, it's only a one-line function. R is specified by paren, paren, A raised to the second power plus B raised to the second power, whole thing raised to the 0.5 power, and we can type the del on the same line. Now let's take a look at the listing of functions. Typing right paren FNS gives you only the name hype. Let's set a couple of variables now. Let pi be 3.14159. And let's build a vector v composed of, say, the integers 1 through 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Ask for a listing of variables. And that list has pi and v in it. Next, uh, let's define yet one more function. Uh, this time, let's pick a very simple one, a simulation of the toss of a coin. Uh, we'll call it toss, del toss. I'll make it a nil attic function, which does not return an explicit result. Striking the carriage return. Line one is simply question mark two, and we can type the del now on this line. Now if we ask for a list of functions, we finally have hype and toss. Now let's pretend that we were going to terminate the session now but that we want to have access to the, the functions hype and toss and the variables pi and v uh, when we come back on. So we want a way to save the material that we have currently. The system command save, it's done by typing a right parenthesis and a S-A-V-E and then a space and then the name of what you want to call all this save material everything that was in your workspace, namely all the variables and all the functions, will be saved. It remains only for us to think up a name under which we're going to save it. Now, almost any name will do, but I would suggest that you use the name first, F-I-R-S-T, so that we can keep close in this lecture.
I get the response, first saved, the date. In your case, it'll be today's date and the time at which it was saved in terms of hours, minutes, and seconds, which should be the current time. Now, the material that we had access to has been saved, but it's really a little different from just having been saved. What we've done is take the image of the material that we had access to, as though we took a photograph of all of it, and put it away somewhere in a pigeonhole, if you will, called first. And now there's another system command which will give us a listing of the pigeonholes that we have filled uh, with material. And that system command is live. If you'll type right parenthesis L-I-B. We have the entry first. And then the message end of library. We also still have access to all the functions and all the variables that we set, namely typing right for an FNS of hype and toss. Now let's clear. Type a right parenthesis, clear. We have a new workspace now. Let's see what functions we have. We have none. Let's see what variables we have. We have none. Can we get back the material that we saved? Yes, we can, and that we do by a right parenthesis, load, and the name under which we saved it, which was first. We get the message back that first was saved, and now if we type right paren FNS, there's hype and toss, and right paren VARS, there's our pi and V. And let's just check the value of V to see if it's what it's supposed to be, and we observe that it is. Now, it is very often the case that you may have a couple of areas of work, two, three, maybe more areas of work, that you want to save in completely different areas. Let's clear again and then define a couple of more functions and save them in some place other than first. Of course, the name we pick is going to be second in this case. So let's do another clear. We have a new workspace, no functions, no variables in it. Let's define the uh, square root function again. R is specified by SQRT of X. R is specified by X raised to the point 5, and we can type a del. Now we know that in this active workspace, or the environment that we're working in, we have a single function called SQRT. Let's pretend that we had several functions now, and let's save this material in a place called second. What do we have immediate access to at this point? We have immediate access to a workspace, which is uh, the one from which the image of second was taken. That is, the only function that we have, if I display functions, is SQRT. Suppose now that I want to get the material that I saved in first. Well, I can load first. Now the function's in my active workspace are hype and toss. Now I'll load second. Note that I didn't have to do a clear in between. Now the function that I have available is SQRT. Let's save yet another workspace. Let's do another clear. This time, let's load 10 class and save that in a place called third. We loaded it from 10 class. It's now in this active workspace, 
everything that was in 10 class, we took a copy of 10 class, we didn't take the original 10 class, is in this active workspace. If we type right paren FNS, we're going to get that lengthy list of functions that I've provided. You can suspend this typing, of course, by depressing the attention button on those machines that have the interrupt feature. I've depressed the attention button. Now, I can save this material in a place called, say, third. Now, if I type right paren lib just to see all the various things that I've saved, we find we have a first, second, third, and an end of library. Let's clear again define a couple of variables and say that in a place called fourth. Clear? I'll let x be a 4 and a 6 and an 8 and a 10. I'll let y be a 2 and a 5 and an 8. And now I'm going to save in fourth. And now I get the message, save ration exceeded. I had only three workspaces available to me. Now, it's possible to acquire additional workspaces. It's possible that uh, you have only two workspaces. That depends how your particular system is configured. So the save ration is exceeded. Well, let's pretend that x and y, which I have available to me now, are really much longer than they are, and I have to get them somewhere. I have to save them somewhere. Well, the first thing I'll ask then is which of the three available pigeonholes that I have can I sacrifice? Well, let's get a list of the library. First, second, third. Let's try to save it in third. We'll pretend that I don't need third anymore. We'll try to save it in third. That's a right paren. Save third. You'd better be very certain that you don't need the material anymore before you do a save like this, because under some circumstances, third would have been erased. In this case, however, it's not saved. This workspace is iota zero. Iota zero meaning clear or clean here. So we can't save it in third. Third already has something in it. Again, APL is preventing you from destroying previous information. Because if we could have saved it into third, we would have destroyed the material that was already in third. It would have been replaced by what we had this time, namely the x and y. Well, suppose that we really want to get rid of third. How do we get rid of it? The system command drop. If you type a right parenthesis, D-R-O-P, and the name of the saved workspace that you want to get rid of, which in our case is third. This will delete it from the library. This will delete all the material that was in third from the library. And then we'll be able to use that pigeonhole for other purposes. Third will now be dropped. And if we ask for right paren lib, we have only first and second, and then the end of library. Now recall that that which we have access to, that is that which is in the active workspace, we don't have any functions, but we do have those two variables, x and y. Now let's save this material, but let's say that we don't want to call it third, we want to call it uh, xy, as that is the two characters x and y placed together. Well, to demonstrate that we're not constrained to using the names first, second, third, and so forth, I'm going to type a right paren save space xy. And now, in my library, I have first, second, and xy saved. 
And I've already discovered that my library has the capacity uh, for only three workspaces. But it doesn't matter what I call them. Now, APL is going to give you a uh, uh, lot of uh, protection against destroying material that you have saved. Recall now that an image of X and an image of Y went into the workspace called XY. If I tried to save it into first, not saved because this workspace was most recently associated with the name XY. So if I wanted to save the material that's in my active workspace into first, I would have to drop first. Then I could call it first again with a save first, but the point is that unless it comes from that place, I can't save it there. But watch the following. I'm going to load first, add a function to that uh, workspace, and then save it again. This I'll be permitted to do. Load first. It currently has these functions in it, height and toss. Let us define a sign function, S-I-G-N, a sign function, and add it to this. Now, what I've done thus far is to take an image, an image of what's in the pigeonhole or the workspace, the same workspace called first. I put it in the active workspace. I have an image of it. I'm going to add an additional function to that image, a function called sign. This is a monadic function which returns an explicit result. Del R is specified by sine of x. R is specified by, and again, uh, that's x greater than 0. Subtract x less than 0. And a del. Since it's a one-line function, I can close it out on that line. Now the functions that I have available in my active workspace are height, sign, and toss. If I attempt to save this into second, recall it came from first. <laughs> it's not saved because it came from first, but I am permitted to save it into first. And now first has been updated, which we can demonstrate. Let's do a clear first. Now we have no functions. Then let's load first. And now the functions that we brought about are hype, sign, and toss. So reviewing, you can save material that you have. You can save several types of material. The place where it's saved is called a saved workspace. You save all of what's in the active workspace at the time that you enter the save. You can recall material from the saved workspace into the active workspace. And what you get is the status of that workspace at the time that you saved it. It's as though no time had transpired whatsoever. Finally, you can delete a workspace, you can drop a workspace by typing right parenthesis, drop, and the workspace name. This concludes lecture 14. Lecture 15, use of the public libraries, the copy command, and the workspace named continue. In the last lecture, we showed you how you could save uh, active workspaces 
by giving them a name and using the command save and that name. Let's check now by typing right print live to see if in fact that material is still there. Although we won't be using it any further, it's uh, interesting just to check if you've uh, lost your connection with APL since the last lecture. So typing right print LIB obtains for us the names of the workspaces that were saved. Right print LIB gives us the names of the workspaces that you saved. Now it's possible that someone else might have in his library the same names, but there's no confusion between the two because your library is associated with your identification number. His library is associated with his identification number. Well, how about this 10 class that we've been loading all along? Library 10 on this particular system is a public library. It's available to anyone who wants to use it and who understands what the material in the library is. Let's see what workspaces have been saved in Library 10. The command for that is right paren lib followed by a 10. The list that you see on your terminal will probably differ from the list that I'm producing. There we see class, though. Class is a member of this library, and you've been getting class out of Library 10 by the command load 10 class. How did class get there in the first place? It got there because I saved it. How did I save it in a public library? I saved it in a public library by typing, and I can't do it at this point, by typing right parenthesis, save, and then a space, and then a 10, and then the word class. I saved it in the public library. Now, the use of the public library, or the public library is intended uh, to uh, contain material which will be used by several people. We view Library 10 as a development or uh, special interest, limited interest public library. There are other libraries which are uh, entirely public. As a matter of fact, they are, uh, uh, they amount to what would be a system library. Library 1 is one of them. We'll be using Library 1, we'll be using some of the material in Library 1 a little later in this lecture. If you attempt to save 10 class, you're not going to be permitted to do that because yours is not the account number that saved it in the first place. So if you attempt a right paren save 10 class, I'll type it up, but I won't execute it. If you do that and a carriage return, you're going to get a message out that it's an improper reference because it was saved by someone else, namely me. Well, I don't want this command to go in, so I'll backspace, push the attention button, and it's as though that message had never gone in. Let's take a look at the contents of library one. That's a right paren, lib, and then a one. Here we have several saved workspaces. Plot format contains information and uh, functions to utilize the APL uh, terminal as a simulated plotter. WSFNS, pronounced WSFNS, contains some uh, special functions for changing the parameters of a workspace, such things as changing how wide the margin is. Apple 67 contains information about yet another APL 67, yet another APL system, uh, APL running on the 67. Type contains a typing exercise in this case. 
Apple, I, I'm not even sure what Apple contains at this point. Apple hist, I'm not sure. Clean space is just a canonically clean workspace. It's equivalent to write paren clear. That is, load one clean space is equivalent to write paren clear. Utility, we'll be using later in this lecture. Appalos is information about another APL system. News is information about the current APL system, and we'll be uh, drawing information out of there in just a moment. Apple course is the drill that you used in a previous lecture. Let's load one news. I want to show you what the most practical way to work in a strange workspace is. If you type right paren load one news and a carriage return, you'll get a message stating when news was saved. Now, when you load a workspace that you're not familiar with, the smartest thing to do is to get a list of what functions are in that workspace. By convention, if there's a function that contains somewhere in its name the word how or what, or if the function called describe is found, there is a function called describe in this workspace, although you can't see it on your screen, then execute that function. That is, execute a function which contains the word how or what or the function by the name of describe. So I'm going to execute describe. And this gives me information about what's contained in this workspace. It says the main functions of this workspace are, and then it's going up a little table which has syntax and description. Apple now B, its description is temporary notes and restrictions on or after the date specified, and instructions for how to use it. Index. Function called index, which lists the first few words of the notes in Apple now. Print n, prints a given note number. Apple Ops gives the latest current implementation status. Schedule gives the APL system schedule information. Now, these names may differ on the system that you're using. They may differ on the system that you're using, but the thing that we're discussing is how you can obtain information when you enter a strange workspace. Well, I want to take a look at the function called schedule, which gives, it says, APL system schedule information. Since the syntax is a nilotic function, I merely have to type schedule. And I get the message, APL will depart from its normal schedule, which on this particular system is 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard, as follows, with the dates and times. So this is the workspace called News. It contains information about the APL system that I'm using now. Let's take a look at one of the other workspaces in Library 1, and that's Utility. Let's load one Utility. Utility saved, certain date, certain time. Again, let's see what functions are here. And it appears that we've stumbled into a bunch of functions which deal with trigonometry. Again, there's a function named describe in this workspace, so I'm going to execute it. And the response is transcendental functions in this workspace, syntax and description, arc cos, <coughs> arc sine, Arc tan, cos, hyperbolic cosin, and 
and so on. Now while we know how we could define a cosine function, let's pose the following problem. Let's say that you want to merge or you want to have available in your workspace called second the function called sine, S-I-N. In other words, you'd like to obtain a copy of the function sine, S-I-N, make it available to you in your workspace called second. And you don't want the entire workspace utility. You want only that particular function. The way to do this is with the copy command. But before that, on the board, I'm going to have to show you a little bit more of the environment in which you're operating. When you execute, you're executing in what I will call an active workspace. In what I will call an active workspace. That's the place where you're working currently. It's uh, as though it represents the uh, notes that you have on your desk, your current working notes. You have in your library several saved workspaces in your library. There can be several saved workspaces. You had one called first, you had one called second, and so on. Each of these saved workspaces could have many functions and many variables in it. Your active workspace gets to be or gets to have what functions it has in it either by your having loaded one of your saved workspaces or loaded a workspace from some public library like library one utility which had many functions in it. This is library one and this is your personal or by loading library 10. You move entire blocks of material from your personal library with a load and the appropriate name, and that moves a copy of it into the active workspace. Similarly, you move from the public library, from one of the workspaces in the public library, with a right paren, load, the library number, and the name. In fact, it wouldn't matter to use, uh, in order to load material from first, it wouldn't matter if you type right paren load, your identification number, and then the name of the workspace. Uh, it's just that when you're dealing with your own library, you can leave out your identification number. We'll assume that that's the one that you want. You move things into your personal library with a save provided that there's available space and that you're not trying to overwrite a name. You delete things from your personal library with a drop, and incidentally, drop's the only thing that will delete things from the personal library. Under some conditions, you can save things into the public library, although the uh, conventions for saving into a public library depend on the rules for running the particular system that you're using. That is, the people who run the system that you're using may not want you to save in the public library. But if you're permitted to save, you do that with a right paren, save, and then the name of the library that you, the number of the public library, like for example, save one, and then the name of the workspace. In my case, 10 class, I inserted by typing a right paren, save, 10 class. Now the problem that we want to do though is to take second which has several functions in it. Let's take a look at what functions I have in second on the terminal. That's FNS. The functions I have are ArcCos. I'm sorry, the functions that I'm showing you are the functions in the active workspace. That, those, that's the only place where I can show the functions. In order to get to see What's in second, I would first have to load second. 
Now I've taken an image of second into the active workspace. Now if I type right print FNS, we only have square root SQRT in second. Now let's say that we want to end up in, in the workspace called second with the function that's there already, namely SQRT. We also want to pick up the function sine from one utility. And there also happens to be a very accurate value of pi in one utility. So we want to draw from second or move all of second into the active workspace. And then from utility, we want to pick up specifically just the function called sine, S-I-N. The sequence for doing that is first to load second. Now, I've just done a load of second, but there's nothing wrong with my doing it again. I now have only the function SQRT at hand. Now I want to obtain from library one utility the function called sign, and that's done with a copy command. Right paren copy the library number from which I want it, which is library one. The name of the workspace, which is utility. And lastly, the name of the particular function that you want to copy, which is sign. Copy one utility sign. Four pieces of information. Actually, the copy command and then three pieces of information. The response to a successful copy is the typing element merely moving over. If it had been an unsuccessful copy, and we'll go through some of them a little later, there would have been a, a, a uh, definite error message. Now, if we type right print FNS, we find that we have sine and square root. So we pulled it over. Let's also pull over the value of, let's also pull over pi. That is a copy one utility pi. <coughs> and let's take a look at the value of pi. There's pi. It's come over. Interestingly enough, let's see. I believe that pi is a function and not a variable. Yes, pi is a function. Why should this be made a function? Well, one good reason for making it a function is that it's difficult to destroy. It then becomes difficult to destroy the previous value of pi. If I say that pi is specified by 3.1415, in other words, that's a much less accurate pi. <laughs> the result is a syntax error because you can't store a value into a function. This is a function. It's a completely different entity. It happens to be a nilatic function which returns an explicit result and merely contains a good value of the constant pi accurate to 17 places available to you and is protected by having made it a function so that it's relatively difficult to destroy it. Anyhow, we now have in our workspace the functions pi, sine, and square root. And now, uh, if we wanted to save into second all these things, since we first got the workspace from second, we're going to be permitted to save it back there. So a save second. <coughs> And now second contained not only the, the function SQRT that it contained initially, but also contains uh, pi and sine, S-I-N. The active workspace, of course, uh, since we saved second from the active workspace, has these three functions in it also. Now, let's attempt to copy something which doesn't exist. Let's attempt to copy from one utility the function called S-I-N-E sign, which does not exist there. Copy from library one, utility, sign. <coughs> Results in a copy error. No copy of it is there. 
let's attempt to copy the function sin again. Now recall that in the active workspace, we already have it. We already have the function sin, so that I copy from one utility sin will not be permitted.